Okay, so you see a campaign or campaigns in your account and you see the limited by budget notification, the nice red status that Google throws at you. Well, what the heck is it? Simply, you're limited by budget. So Google's just saying, based off of your campaign, the goals you're going after, depending on your bid strategy and the keyword search volume that you have, or this could be shopping as well. So the volume of those shopping products, you could spend more money. Now, it's not as simple as, okay, just go increase budget. You could do that. And in some cases that is the correct move, but what do you do with limited by budget when you can't just increase budget, right? In some cases, especially if you're an analyst or a media buyer, an agency, you're a freelancer, you work in-house for a company, you might have strict budget that you have to stick to. So what do you do with these limited by budget campaigns? And I see this all the time. And the reason I don't like seeing it is because normally they're leaving money on the table. They're allowing high converting searches or products to be limited in their exposure and they're allowing what I call losers or low to mid performers, whether it's shopping or search to waste some of that precious ad spin that could be actually reallocated to your top sellers that could get more volume, which would actually increase your sales quicker. And so again, you know, let's say a client or you personally, you've got 10 K a month in spend. Your goal is to figure out how do I maximize the revenue or whatever your goal is from that $10,000. What happens over time, people get like messy campaigns and they get lazy. They see a limited by budget, but like, yeah, but you know, we're on budget. So I'm only going to spend 10 K. We're not going to go over. So things are good. Yeah, we could spend more, but that's not where you should end. It shouldn't just be, I can't spend anymore. This limited by budget for Google, it was created to get you to spend more, right? It's just pinging to you. Hey, you amplify your spend here. You can make more if you just spend more. And in some cases that actually does work. And in some cases, again, that's the correct move. However, when you can't just increase it, you shouldn't stop there. You shouldn't just leave it alone and then move on to other things. You could actually get into the weeds of the campaign and make more. So I'm going to show you a real account where I do this. Okay. So I am inside of an actual account that I was auditing. And so a lot of this will be like blurred out, but these are search campaigns. Okay. And I'm seeing three campaigns here that are limited by budget. And I do see a lot of spend that's just kind of allocated in a very similar budget amount, 175 a day, 75 a day, a couple other $100 per days. Now, when I look at performance, I'm seeing over the last 30 days, I see one campaign hit a 5X, one hit a 6.7. I see one hitting a six. I see one hitting a 10, that's a dynamic campaign. That one is not limited by budget. And then a few others that are, are doing incredibly well. But again, some of these don't have the limited by budget. So I'm, I'm less, these are unique cases. I really wanna focus just on the limited by budget here. So these three campaigns, right, are limited by budget. What do you do to make more money from this scenario when you can't increase budget? And so when I can't increase budget, here's how I'm looking at it. Number one, do these campaigns a need to be actually split out? Could I consolidate these into one campaign? So for this company, they sell like a bunch of metal stuff online. And is it necessary to have it segmented by product category? Now, in this case, it is necessary because there's different margin metrics that are being attributed to this. So, and managed uniquely. So these campaigns are segmented for a reason. This was insight that I got during the audit process. So if you can't consolidate, because what I would like to do in this case is actually roll up my top performing keywords or ad groups, probably just have my one campaign with my top keywords for stainless, top keywords for hot rolled steel, top keywords for aluminum, have those broken out in ad groups in one campaign and then lump the budget in there. Cause again, now I can kind of weed out 
the low performers, which I'm going to show you some examples here, and then maximize my top for performers across the board here. But that's not something I can do in this case. So how do I look at it from an individual campaign level now? So I'm going to use stainless as an example, and we're just gonna dive right into the campaign. Okay, so I'm inside of this campaign now. This is a bunch of the keywords that are running within the campaign. Now, the TROAS goal here is 500% on the account, right? And they hit a 4.92 over the, like the last 30 days. So it's a tad under, but there's probably some latency and some of that. So they're probably hitting right around this 5X. Okay, if I only have $100 per day, I can't, the client's not gonna give us more money. I can't really do anything else. It's like $100 is all I have for the stainless steel products. What do I start doing? I start analyzing. Where is the money being made? Where's the volume coming from? Where is my high conversion rates coming from? And I start looking at not just, I'm, I'm doing, I've got the last three months pulled. Let's do last 30 days. And actually the results are better in the last 30 days. You'll see this too. If you have like high converting terms that are limited by budget, you'll sometimes see that ROAS higher than what your goal is. So in this case, you know, if I were the client, I would be recommending just pouring more money into it, but I, I get it. In some cases, like I don't have any more money right now, I can do that. So I have to, you know, let's carry on with what we have. And that's why I'm making this video. But here, if I look at the last 30 days, I'm seeing some keywords that, you know, are doing better than others. Now it's only 45 total conversions. So I don't want to judge it based off that. And that's why I did pull back a longer time frame. I want to see truly what are my, my kingmaker keywords inside of this campaign. One of the things I have here that I, that I also analyze is, is search impression share metrics. And I actually have a full video on how to read sort of competitor insight data. And I go more into the search and impression metrics there. I'll make sure that video is in the description below, but search impression share just quickly is, you know, how often your ad showed versus how often it could have shown. So in this case for stain, for stainless plate, we, we only showed 20% of the time. Now, how much is this due to budget versus rank? And you can actually figure that out. So I have search lost impression share due to rank. So this literally is just saying, yeah, you lost this much in impressions due to a poor ad rank. And ad rank is going to be, you know, based off quality scores and your bid generally. So in this case, I only lost 12%. Well, I only have a 20% impression share. I lost 12 though due to, to rank. So 70% of my impression share loss on this keyword is actually due to the fact that I don't have enough budget. Now they don't have a specific metric there that just shows the budget piece, but I'm losing out on a substantial amount of money due to the fact I'm distributing my budget in this campaign. I have $100 per day and I'm distributing it across way too many keywords at this point for the the, the budget of this. So what would I do? And and if I had free control of the campaign, I'm going to do what I want, which is hack out the low performers and let the high performers live here. If you're working with a client, I would come to them and say, here's what's low performing for us. Are you okay not advertising on this right now? We can make more money from our $100 per day budget by maximizing our top performers. So in this case, looking at like the last 30 days, I kind of want to see something that has, you know, decent conversion. So what I do is look at our average conversion rates, 2.65, our average ROAS is five. And so what, what do I have that's gonna be like top performing? Well, stainless plates, not too bad, even though the ROAS is a bit low, but the volume's decent there. And I have a about average conversion rate. Stainless angle, this is huge, right? So my ROAS here is quite high. I've got really good volume from it and my conversion rate is significantly higher than our baseline average of a 2.65. I get a four out of that. Stainless sheet, same thing, almost a 4% conversion rate, decent volume and high, high ROAS. Now, on the flip side, if I go, let's do by cost now. If I look at stainless round bar, I got a 1.48 and I'm under the average conversion rate out of 2.45. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and go through all of this, but what I'm going to start doing is actually pausing these low performers. 
what happens is I no longer am spending money on clicks and impre impressions on these losing keywords. Now, in most cases, if I'm working with an account that I have more budget, in this case, what I actually would do is take some of these losers and I might isolate them into a new campaign. It's just low performing terms. And I'm just seeing, can I actually get these dialed into like a 5X if that's the goal or whatever the goal is? And is it just not hitting the goal because it's lumped in with this campaign and the smart bidding is really just utilizing the, the, the revenue it gets on high converters and there it's just dispersing budget incorrectly. So sometimes I'll pull the low performers out move them to another isolated campaign test where I have more control over them. And that way I still get some ad exposure on it and I'm really seeing, can I make these work? So I don't always just wanna judge it based off of it being inside of a larger built out campaign. But in this case, they have no more money. It's $100 per day for stainless products. So I'm saying maximize your top keywords, get rid of everything else. If you can spend $100 per day on your top keywords, that is exactly what you should do because now you're going to be getting keywords that are doing more than 2.65% conversion rate that are already hitting pretty high row as, and now every dollar you spend is going to something that's going to convert much higher. You're going to move the needle on your money. So that's how you print more money from the same amount of money in a campaign that's limited by budget that you can't spend more money on. The other things you can start looking at is actual return on ad spend goals. So, or CPA goals, depending on the bid strategy. This campaign right now is set to a T-Row as a 500%. In the last 30 days, I eked out a 7.5. If I moved this to top keywords and I still can spend $100 per day, then the next move I would start making is actually increasing my ROAS goal. So instead of 500%, I may move this up to like a 600 or 700, maybe even higher since it's already hitting a 7.5, but I wouldn't wanna go too crazy. The, you have to be cautious of the conversion volume here. I've got a lot of other videos where I talk about the need for a conversion volume for smart bidding to work. A full bidding masterclass, that video will be in the description below. So here, if I was confident, and I actually would be in this case, increasing my T ROAS goal, what am I doing? I'm telling the machine learning, go get me more efficiency, right? I want more return for my money. And I'm able to pull that off right now because I'm limited by budget. And so now what you'll actually end up normally seeing is your average CPC starts to decrease. Now there's a diminishing return there, right? If I ask for too much, it may not be able to spend $100 per day and then I'll crash out sales completely. So you have, it's like a bit, of a, a bit of an art there to it. You have to slowly work it and mold it in the direction you want. But I can't tell you how many times I do audits, I see limited by budget campaigns, they can't spend anymore and they just stop. And so what they end up doing is they leave all these junky keywords living in there with their top performers and then they do nothing with their budget. You literally could make more money by just paying for less clicks by increasing the efficiency target of your T ROAS, or if it's a CPA goal, you decrease that CPA cool down, you get a lower CPC. When, what happens when you get a lower CPC? You get more clicks for the same daily spend that you have. So just those two things right there, the working on pausing out the low performers of the keywords, and then actually trying to get more efficiency then for your daily budget by increasing the efficiency of your bid strategy, whether it's T ROAS or CPA goal, that right there will do wonders for you and make you more money from the same amount of money. You can also go another level with the limited by budget stuff. You can start going into, you know, device changes. So if you see certain devices do better, this account actually it doesn't even run a mobile or tablet so they've already excluded that but let's say mobile or tablets was on here and you see tablets is like a very poor performer we could hack that out and then that way we're not wasting money on poor performing devices the other thing you could look at is even audiences sometimes i've done audits or worked with a consulting clients and they're limited by budget again they can't spend more and i'm looking at it i'm like because usually you like listen smart bidding will usually try to fine tune, you know, ad schedules and audiences and devices. 
But in some cases, it's just like, just exclude it. If, if it's like low volume, low performing for you, don't, don't worry about it. Like just spend the money to maximize the return. And so in some cases, especially if you have like a B2B type account, you know, ages could be different, right? So here in the last 30 days, 18 to 24 year olds generated a whopping one sale. Now I'm not seeing, let me pull back and here you want more data, right? So I wouldn't want to judge 18 to 24 year olds off of like one conversion, but you can see the, the conversion rates pretty low volume of conversions is really low in 18 to 24 year olds. So if I'm trying to squeeze every last dollar out of my $100 per day budget, I actually may come in here and just, you know what, machine learning, don't even look at 18 to 24 year olds anymore. Just utilize the budget on the other age demographics. Now in some accounts, you may not be able to do demographic changes. Like if you're in financing, mortgages, things like that. But if you're not, you can come in here and do stuff like this. I normally don't recommend doing this though, in most cases, unless you're in a situation like this tight budget, you're limited, you've got to now start squeezing. So the other thing you could look at is household income, gender, I don't normally do that unless it's like a super rare case. And then also locations. I don't normally recommend mixing countries, but if you're in a, a, an account or you're, you're auditing an account or whatever your case may be, and you see a bunch of different countries lumped into one campaign. There's many times I'm like, guys, get rid of, why are you spending all this money in Australia when all your money's coming from United States? Get rid of Australia. If you wanna maximize Australia at some point, do it in its own campaign and figure that out uniquely, but don't mix them. And in this case, we're just, this, this campaign's just targeting the United States. So we don't have to worry about that. So you can go further in the weeds. By the way, all of these settings I actually discuss at least in the setup stage, in a video on how to set up search campaigns, I will have that in the description below. Okay, there you go. So you're limited by budget, you see that status and you can't spend anymore. This is the thinking, these are the optimizations that you should be making. You shouldn't just stop there and be like, okay, well, we're limited by budget, we'll just let it be, it's working, it's performing and you know, we'll be, we'll be happy. No. There's a lot of money still to be made in the weeds of the campaign then Again, you should always be thinking, how do I maximize my top, top performers? How do I figure out how to get everything else to work? And I can't tell you how many audits I do where they just have a campaign limited by budget and they just stop, they just let it be. And then they've got a bunch of losers mixed in there and now their impression share and, and total clicks are decreased because the budget is being dispersed amongst too many keywords for such a small budget at that point, or reworking the bid strategies to get cheaper clicks like I showed you, and then also getting into the weeds of additional campaign settings. So don't let limited by budget freak you out if you can't spend more. You can actually, this is an opportunity to now increase the efficiency of that campaign if you see opportunities in it like I did for this account. Okay, I hope you got great value from this. Listen, this was an audit. We do audits for free. If you want one, these are the types of valuable information that we share with them. Uh, there's a description below to contact us to get a free audit. So if you qualify and you're spending money on Google ads and you qualify for the audit, we do it for free. So go sign up for that. If not, I will see you on the next video.